So here we have it, indeed, as you say. And as the panel said as well, so number these first 10 minutes, how much can Payne get done? Can they make sure that Leo is able to find that space to start getting that farm, get on that, that road towards a, a decent Battle Fury timing? Because they have to play at a sort of a, a decent pace, right? I mean, how does sort of the late game matchup work? The panel was saying, Drow, Dusa, you're feeling very confident later on. But surely Anti-Mage has, has some sort of strengths against a, a Medusa in a late game scenario. You do, and that's one. That's pretty much the only justification for why they went for it. Typically, most teams would be like, okay, we already have this Templar Assassin, let's just go for mid-game dominance all around. But with the way that the rest of Liquid filled out their non-core roles, the Sanking, the Disruptor, this Rubik, you're better off just being like, okay, as long as we do fairly good in the lanes, our anti mage should be able to catch up, you know, get a Manta-style Battle Fury timing, make the Bedusa feel very, very useless, and hopefully our Templar Assassin can bridge the gap until then. Uh, we'll see what sort of uh, lane matchups they are able to get at the start, because some of them could be a little tricky for pain. You know, I'm seeing at the moment six people down on this bottom, three versus three, trying to have a look at the runes. But Leo's being forced away. CH will try and come in to grab it, but won't be able to push them out. So pain, you have to grab the one down bottom, the second up top. So just the two for two on the bounty runes. And we'll see whereabouts Leo is able to find somewhere to farm on this AM. For the moment being, he is going to start walking up towards that top lane. It is only the Sand King there for now. We'll see if anyone else is, is going to look to head up there to put some pressure onto the air. Make sure that Leo doesn't get that good start. Yes, the great migration north as Leo, Leo transitions his way up there. Did not have to spend a TP, though. But it doesn't look like Templar Assassin herself is going to have any better of a time, even if she is parked mid. Yeah, not at all. With Kuro starting off in the middle lane, spamming out the Thunder Strikes onto Adriano just to help Miracle in those first few levels and ensure that Adriano isn't able to sort of snowball, get out of control with those first few waves. Doesn't mean that this top lane, Mind Control, alongside Matumba actually for now as they're going for a bit of a right click wall onto Leah. Has to be a, a little careful as he does, of course, not have the blink skewed, skilled up as his first point. Has that mana break and will be fine to fog them, get the salve off. And resume farming for now. Drow is more than willing to take these trades with the Anti-Mage this early on. She only needs level 6 to, before her farm starts accelerating. Anti-Mage, however, he needs that full Battle Fury. So if you're just right tra trading right clicks, trading Harass, Drow Ranger is going to come online much sooner. And she doesn't even need to do that much. She's got a Medusa in the mid lane. And this Templar Assassin is not getting a whole heck of a lot done with Kuro just constantly harassing her. And these side lanes as well, I mean, are we, we going to see someone move on Liquid? Because obviously at the moment they do have Mind Control and Matumba sitting in this top lane. You know, Rubik, he's the one enjoying the, the solo experience down bottom uh, in that 1v1 against the Doom. Do you think we're going to see something change? Or, or is this just going to be how they're going to keep it with, with the Sand King backing up the Drow? Liquid's content with keeping it this way. It's Pain who's under the gun that they need to make some moves because the Templar Assassin cannot keep up like this if a Disruptor is just going to sit here the whole time. Theo has come down to the mid to kind of help out uh, check some of these runes. But until Pain start putting some additional pressure on the Drow or starting to relieve some of the pressure on the Templar Assassin, I imagine Liquid's just pretty cool with the situation. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the panel said, you know, GH playing the Rubik. We've seen a, a fair bit of Rubik 5. GH showing us how, how good it can be as a 4. He says, I'm not even going to play as a 4. I'm going to play as a 3. I'm solo <laughs> off laning. As he is picking up the CS down bottom. And we'll see what he's able to do with this sort of free, you know, having this lane that, that's going to give him such a good boost in both levels and farms to, to start the match off. And a farm group, it can be so effective this game. Blink Dagger initiation as uh, it's sort of going to be so terrifying for an anti-mage who's farming by himself. And then Rubik has a lot of good spells to steal. Just looking at the Olicor, anything you steal from Earthshake will most likely be valuable now. It's starting to get really aggressive on yeah, Leo in this top lane. Running past the tower, trying to see if they can get the, the setup. Kuro is indeed going to be at a glimpse 444. Straight back to base, though. As he TPs in in an attempt to, to help Leo out in this lane, where Leo has been finding pretty good farm so far. 11 for 4 on the AMCS. They will be able to get the Fisher block off onto Kuro here, trapping him in. He'll go straight for the TP out with the Borrow Strike as well from Mind Control. Kuro will be allowed to escape. Now turn their attention towards Mind Control though instead. With a blink forward and a block off, Leo is doing his best to get this kill and he'll get it. First blood goes to Leo as they punish Liquid for being a little too aggressive there, getting behind that tower. Getting a little too cheeky in that. That's going to be more money for the anti-mage to start this game off. And, and in a game where he was farming not too badly at all in that lane. Yeah, and I'm not sure if Monty oh. had skilled up silence. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to look for him as well. He's blocked off with the Fisher. He's trying his best to cut his way around the trees, but he cannot escape. Another kill there for Payne on this top lane. 
this was the movement that was necessary. And it started out as a defensive movement. They were just trying to make sure this anti-image stayed protected because Abaddon got glimpsed back to base. Earthshaker had to show up, pick up the pieces, but ends up panning out as they finish off Drow Ranger. And I'm not 100% sure if she skilled up Silence because she was trying to help out the Sand King to live, but she didn't have the mana for it, unfortunately. So a point in Silence this early on is not a bad thing at all, but again, it, this early lane matchup is... Oh! oh. And Theologa, he's just able to walk in and get the Courier! They've got the Fisher block off again. They're looking towards Kuro. Pain, they'll pick up another kill. This time they do lose 4-4-4. Four, four, four. But a lot of positive action here on this top lane for Pain, getting Leo on his anti-mage involved in three kills already at four and a half minutes in. Theo with the boots on this shaker. They were not ready for that courier snipe. He moves in very, very quickly. He's been getting really good blocks off, and now you see Liquid are having to bring people in. GH, yeah. this offlane Rubik has now come to have to support a Drow Ranger. GH doesn't want to be doing this. He wants to be farming. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, they've, they've sort of had to resume back to normal business. Yeah, getting mind control back on that bottom lane. We'll see nice how silence. much sort of that, that decision to give GH the priority. And the early game will pay off in those first five minutes. Another Fisher, beautifully onto the two of them. Matumba's dead again. Pain. Continuing to just crush Liquid on this top lane. I feel like a lack of respect on this Shaker. I... Liquid should know more than enough what a Shaker's capable of. The other core's just getting so much done. Every single Fisher is warranting them one, two kills a time. It's five minutes in. Pain Gaming have a 2k lead. It's possible that Liquid are like, well, you know, the Shaker doing this well, he's bound to go mid, you know, go kill a Medusa, but Medusa actually is not crushing TA as hard as uh, it once was in the early minutes. Yeah, 28 for 12. Adriano is having a pretty good time at top. Leo is going to jump in aggressively, looking towards Matumba. Man, Matumba has got Kuro and GH behind him. The Aphotic Shield's there on Leo, so they can continue to chase this down. Matumba, he's trying to run, but he's dead. The missed call from 444 finishes him off. They'll look for more. GH trapped off. Double kill for 444. Liquid. What are they doing? They're messing up. Pain. They're loving this. They're cruising through this laning stage. 3k lead. Leo just continuing to get involved in so much on that top oh, lane. Oh, he wants more. He's going back, but unfortunately gets glimpsed away by Kuro. He is not stopping anytime oh. soon. I have never seen an anti-mage be this confident, but this is what you can get away with. Rubik's telekinesis is way too long. And as well as Rubik, uh, as well as the disruptor, he's... His uh, Thunderstrike was getting counterspelled. I don't know, this is amazing try laning from Pain Gaming. I, and this is AM, is, Leo's in just such a good position now. He's, he's got the Ring of Hell, he's got full treads, the Orb, the Quelling Blade, the Stout. He's good to just sit here in this lane, he's soon to hit level six. It's a big danger zone, and, and as, as I say, it's all on GH to make big things happen. They gave him in that lane priority at the start. This Rubik's got to do something. Mid lane, Miracle, he's in trouble. Another Fisher block off from Theo Lacour trapping him. He has got a Fairy Fire, another Snake will top at the mana. So Adriana, oh, he, wants could, it. he really wants to try for this kill, but he won't go for it. Miracle will have to back up, but at the same time, it's still a win in itself for Pain. Miracle has no regen. Yeah, that Courier kill actually proving to be quite the detriment to Liquid in this early game. Still dead for another five seconds, but everything is coming up pain gaming right now, and this is what was necessary. It's not like... Oh, oh. and look who's here again! Another Fisher from Theo Lacour. Batumba will try and knock them back with the Gust. GH will be able to jump as well, of and a nice stolen Fisher. But it doesn't matter! Leo, Manafoy kills off Matumba Man again! The tips come out, and boy, they deserve to start sending them that way. As the, just the decision making from Pain in the way that they've reacted to the sort of unconventional start from Liquid's been perfect. Bottom lane, Lelis leading in with the Doom, just walks in straight away onto Mind Control. He's going to get this kill as well. There's nothing that can be done by this Sand King. A solo kill for the Doom. I apologize to Lelis. I kind of forgot there was a Doom in this game. I forgot there was a bottom lane in this game. I, th it... I mean, I think Liquid did as well, sending two cores up to the top lane to start the game off. And so far, it's, it's not been the move for them. Uh, here's the GH, the man that was enjoying that bottom lane. He's out of mana, he's being run down by the two of them. They should be able to have a good shot at this. Leo can blink forward aggressively, and he will do so. It is by the Shrine, TP's coming in, and Mind Control will keep GH safe. Pops the Arcane Boost, they turn, they get the kill onto Theo Lacour. As long as the Anti-Mage doesn't die, that's the most important thing. And as long as you're forcing Liquid to move around, like, normally an anti-mage is like, please, everyone get out of my lane. 
you know, why are you guys trilining with me? You make Liquid keep coming up here. But if you're racking up kills like this, this is yeah. 3 0 oh, 4 right now. I mean, now. when have you seen. Yeah, 3 0 4, eight minutes in, up against Liquid. Leo is going to be feeling amazing at the moment. And he's got to keep his cool bottom lane. Someone who's not feeling pretty good about this game is Matumba Man. Still level four at nine minutes in, dying yet again. Leo bringing out the old chap, bringing out the Sebs, and I, I don't blame him. Now, Batman in trouble in this top lane. But he gets the deny. Oh, oh Liquid. Boy. Oh my goodness. Pain Gaming in this first nine minutes, it couldn't be going any better for them. This is just classic Liquid versus South America. It's just written in it's the stars. It's now, happened before. Mid lane miracle. He's getting converged upon here. The other cool can just get a good angle for the Fisher. Miracle's getting good, he's going to be in so much trouble. The Fisher stone won't connect. Just sort of block GH off to the side. Still Miracle falling very low. Fade ball out onto the other core. Will stop him from being able to finish off Miracle. Miracle should be fine. Four heroes from Liquid coming to that mid lane to make sure that Miracle doesn't die. But still, again, another few moments of play where Miracle's got to make that long walk back to base. He's not got any regen out. The other core's actually still got his eyes on him here. A Fisher oh. won't be enough damage and doesn't quite get the block on the right side. Even so, Miracle probably would have been able to walk away. But it's still a lot of time that they are slowing down this Medusa. And sure, Miracle still not in a bad place on the farm, but he's going to start slipping behind if Pain Gaming can continue this pressure. Slowing down the Medusa, slowing down the Drow Ranger. She has to come mid to help keep the lane warm. And she's not even level six yet. It's 10 minutes into the game, and Matumbo Man is still looking for that point in marksmanship. Mid lane. Fisher in, the early call, looking for Matuma Man. They do have the lift back for GH. We'll drag Lelis back, but in fact, whoa! He's got the Doom straight down onto GH. He's going to dive this one past the tower. GH cannot escape this. Matuma can try for the deny, but he's not going to be able to time it. Lelis gets another kill with his Doom. 5k lead now for Pain Gaming. They get the pressure onto the tier one tower in the middle as well. Miracle will come forward with some snakes potentially to try and clear them out. But this, it's just, they're playing so fast. They're playing so fast, they're playing so clean, and typically in these situations when I'm watching a South American team, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Something is bound to go wrong. They're going to overplay their hand a little bit, but they're playing so collected right now. And it's, it's true that it, they know what they're dealing with. It's liquid. You cannot trip up at all. So much movement around the map, and they're all starting to move up top. Let's see if they can catch mind control. Very close to his Blink Dagger on the SK. Pretty much has it. Just 30 gold and it's there for Mind Control. And Liquid are going to need to rely on him to make some big plays happen. Come in with those, those sort of counter attacks to Pain Gaming's movements around the map. So up top, just Mind Control and Kuro hovering behind here. I think now is the point that you start buying a little bit of time for your Templar Assassin. She's going to be going for the Blink Dagger first, which I'm a big fan of. I don't think this is the game that you could get away with Deso first. I, I think you need to go a little bit faster than that. And so she's farming up her way to a Blink Dagger. You're, none of your towers are under pressure. The only thing is I would like if Pain start establishing some vision in the enemy jungle because Drow Ranger has now hit level 6. She feels very, very unsafe. Even though Matumbo Man is kind of far out, it's not like she's going to be able to stay that far out on the map for long. So once Templar Assassin gets that Blink Dagger online, then Anti-Mage gets to, you know, not be the killing machine that he is right now. 3-0 oh, and 4 at 12 minutes. Yeah, that first big hurdle for Leo, the Demon Edge, it, it's pretty much overcome. Just yeah, this 12 minute mark, having that 2200 gold in the bank. This Battle Fury timing couldn't be any better here for Leo. Unless Liquid can catch him out, he's on his own around here. Three members of Liquid in the jungle, but Leo, he's playing it smart. Sticking to the jungle, not showing in lane, as he knows how close he is. And if, if he does finish this Battle Fury within the next minute, it's going to be very hard for Liquid to keep their cores on the same level as this Anti-Mage's farm. Yeah, three of the Liquid heroes converged bot, now Fissure block up top. Kuro, no escape for him. Another kill to be picked up by Pain as they'll take the tier one tower for sure as well up top. Matuma Man would, should be able to get this tier one tower trade. They're actually going to start TPing back at Pain. They want to hold on to this tower. Let's see and if they can go for it. They look towards him. The Doom's already out there onto GH. Leo, he's able to blink in towards the lane. He's going to continue to farm Mana on Matuma Man. The Drow's dead. They'll pick up GH as well. Two kills for Pain. As there will be the escape from Mindshot. Was able to get the blink off. The Pain Gaming, they get that pressure up top. They're still able to come back, hold on to their own tier one tower. Mind Control, 
should be fine here. They don't have any more catch to, to deal with the sanking, but this lead just continues to grow. 7K net worth advantage now for Payne. I think this is one of the advantages that the Abaddon had over the Oracle that the panel was mentioning. An Oracle is great with an anti-mage, but right now the miscoil burst heal is so valuable. The aphotic shield just makes this anti-mage so survivable. An anti-mage should not be able to get away with this at this stage of the game, being so active and kills. Normally you'd see an anti-mage who sees three heroes bot and he's like, good job guys, thanks for showing up to defend my tower. I'm gonna go jungle. But he jumped into the fight, he canceled Matumbo Man's TP. He is not letting up anytime soon. And if you're a Liquid fan, this is pretty much exactly what Payne needed to do. So it's not like things are going catastrophically bad. Liquid, while I mean, they're sure, going pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But at the same time, they are still under a clock on Payne. The clock, they keep buying times, they keep hitting checkpoints. That's adding a few minutes here and there. But they need to keep this pace up. And now that Templar Assassin has completed her Blink Dagger, I imagine that they're not planning on letting up anytime soon. Mind Control will finally be able to claim that tier one tower down bottom. I've only really been able to turn up to have one sort of fight with his blink, and now you look over back to Payne. Shaker, he's ha he has his blink ready. Tiola Kaur, the man who's been making those big plays early game, walking around the lanes. Now you've got to look out for him in these team fights, in the ways that Theo's going to start things off. It's Payne Gaming. They are into the pit, heading for this Roche. Liquid don't seem to, to sort of be around the area. Be aware of this. Payne Gaming. It's not necessarily the quickest, as you say, going for the blink rather than the desert first on Adriana. It's not going to be super quick, but it looks like they're going to get away with it, Tsunami. Yeah, I guess that's part of the reason why they're getting away with it. They go with the blink, Liquid's like, eh, I mean, uh, how's, uh, how's a TA going to take Roche this early on? And she really can't. You've got a Crimson Guard, Doom who's tanking all of it, and it's taking quite a bit of time. But Liquid, like, they're, they're grouping up as three to make sure that Matumba Man doesn't get ganked. It's not like all your cores are farming idly by themselves. You're still having to protect these people, and Roche is going to go down very, very soon. They've got it, Pain. 15 minutes in, Aegis on Adriano, immediate smoke. This is the time to fight. You have the Aegis, you've got this Blink Shaker. They can make another big slam on top of Liquid right now. Well, Liquid feels confident. They've posted up a ton of Observer Wards on the southern side of this map. And part of it is to make sure that Drow Ranger feels safe farming on this side of the map, but. Mind control gets caught, they may be forced to fight. Liquid, they, they, just, they just need to buy some sort of time to get Matu back in the game. It's just been, just been a bit of a mess on who, who's playing which position, really, on Liquid. You know, you've got Mind Control saying, I'll play four, G8 saying he'll play three, and Matuma Man saying, I'll play five. Maybe involuntarily, but looking at the net worth, it seems like that. He's down there at the moment. Needs a lot of time to climb back in. Yasha, done on Leo. These timings keep flying out for the anti-mage. As Liquid will go for a smoke. Heading up towards this top half of the map, but nobody's up there. Leo's already retreating. Nobody's up there, and they don't have any vision up there. They dedicated all their vision to making sure that Matumba Man doesn't need any heroes. He just needs people. Or he just needs the vision of the wards. And now my control, smoke dispels. Can they find him? He's in. The Burrow Stripe with the spell shield was out in time. There will be the Static Storm drop down, trapping up Leo. Let's see if they can kill him. He's got a lot of magic resist oh, with that spell shield. Shake. He's still alive. Shield's there. He's out. And now the turnaround. Pay coming with the Doom. Two dead on Liquid. They have the vision on my control as well with that trap. Will be able to blink away. But there's the chase. They'll keep themselves on top of the sanking. Mind control cannot escape either. And a smoke gank gone horribly wrong for Liquid. As all three of their heroes died and Leo survived, and they threw so much at him as well, jumping in with the power strike, but the quick spell shield usage, the static storm, kinetic field control, it's not enough at this stage of the game for the anti-mage with these early items that Leo's already got done. The Shaker's always in the right place at the right time. The Abaddon's always at the right place at the right time. This is the kind of dream that you, uh, this is the kind of game that you dream of as an anti-mage, where you have absolute faith in your allies, and they come through every single time. 16 to 3, 8K net worth advantage for Payne at 18 minutes. Oh, they've played this absolutely beautifully so far. And it's not like even they're playing super aggressive with their Aegis. It's Liquid who are trying to find ways to create space. And it's great your Drow Ranger and your Medusa were not involved in that fight, but you keep giving more and more net worth to the Santi Mage and these supports, the Shaker, the Abaddon. Now Miracle trying to siege with his double damage rune. And all of Liquid are parked behind him. Uh, he, he's their big presence at the moment. He's been sort of hitting the jungle, AFK farming, trying to take this game on his shoulders, as he really is the only core that it feels that Liquid have at this moment in time. 
Both Mind Control and Matumba very far behind where they'd hoped to be at this point of the game with how those side lanes ended up going for Liquid. All things considered, objective-wise, Liquid is doing a good job at buffeting Pain Gaming back. I mean, Liquid is actually up right now on Towers as there's still a bot tier one on the Dire side. And that's, what allowing, that's what's allowing all these aggressive movements from Liquid. Unfortunately, all of that vision, or at least a majority of the vision that they had put down in this Radiant Southern Jungle has been cleared out by Pain. And they keep going down there looking for something, but Pain's not giving it to them. I mean, if you're playing gaming, are you feeling some sort of pressure to, to keep this advantage? Do you want to be hunting down the, the Medusa? Or because you are at such a, such a lead, you, you can continue to just keep playing the game as is, keep farming on your anti-mage, on your TA, until you, you know, you're a solid sort of item or two ahead of Liquid. Like, is there, is there a sort of a, a timer that Pain Gaming are on, even though that they are ahead? The way that they're playing it is unique in that you can almost, like, from, from minute one, the way that they've been playing, which is keep anti-mage protected with just a handful of heroes. If your Templar Assassin is in the vicinity, let's take some objectives. They took the Roche, they just took the top tier two, and it's not even like they're like, okay, now is the time that we team fight. Now is the time that we've completed this significant item that we need to change how we play. As long as they keep keeping this Medusa and Drow under pressure, like, look at anti-mage. He's starting to poke at tier three. He knows when he's safe. See where they can find it. Lock off with the fish up, jump onto Kuro. Kuro's gone. No messing around for Leo, using the Mana Void to claim that kill. The rest of Liquid will disperse and get out of there. But these timings for these cores on Pain Gaming looking so good. Adriano, the Deso, he's into the BKB next. Once he has that done, he's going to be such a force. GH jumped upon another free and easy kill for Leo's anti mage. 6 0 5. Well and truly unstoppable here in this game one. I, I just never seen such clean play from an anti-mage this early on. It's, it's truly impressive. And I, it's not like a product of Liquid playing bad, I don't think. Like, it's just Pain playing this exactly the way that they need to do. The draft, I mean, the panel mentioned it, that it's a very, very delicate situation whenever you pick an anti-mage into a Drow Medusa because you slip up one time and it starts careening out of control, which is why I'm still very, very apprehensive. I'm, I'm keep expecting them to mess up, but like, uh, the Aegis is now gone, so it's some potential for it to happen. And for what it's worth, Medusa is doing a fairly good job. She's keeping up with this anti-mage. It's just the Drow Ranger that's the real issue. She's so far behind right now. This Doom is just catapulted above her in terms of net worth. And the, having this early Crimson Guard, like, we haven't even seen the significance of it, because Lelis was like, okay, cool. I mean, like, if Drow Ranger and Medusa want to show up, we'll take care of them. Look at the silence on Leo, but they'll need more than that now. To control him with the items that he has, Kuro in the middle lane. He's going to die to the trap. Adriano. You know, cool guys don't look at explosions. He didn't need to. Traps popped and he walks out of there. Another kill for this Templar assassin. That's bottom. Mind control has to keep himself hidden. And Leo, oh, straight into the trees. Does find him. But obviously on him, no. On his own, no detection. So mind control will be able to escape. That's the first sort of the, the big item now for Miracle after that Manta. He's got the Scardy. Yeah, Scardy's online now, and we were seeing the Drow Ranger take some of the more dangerous farming positions. Now it's Medusa's time to return the favor to the Drow Ranger. She's willing to fight, she has Stone Gaze, and I think Liquid are now willing to take a 5v5 engagement. They've had this initiation on the Sand King, haven't been able to take advantage of it. They've had Static Storm, tried it once on that anti mission of the Ancients, wasn't able to pan out, but if they can get a glimpse on someone or find Ooh, this TA. They will. They'll get the jump on him, Boa Strike into the control, Adriano. Try for the mail, but sentries are down. They pick off the Templar Assassin. Liquid able to make a successful move with that smoke, and immediately they'll look for more. Ready to continue the aggression, see who they can find. Scam will hit. They know that someone's deep in the jungle. It is the Shaker. Ward's down. Kuro's got the vision. Liquid, they connect. They'll pick up a second. Diola Core's gone. <laughs> Nevertheless, 10k behind. Liquid still showing that they can get on the map, get these kills. They'll also be able to finish off the tier two in that middle lane. Oh, they'll They're now, do in more. fact, pushing up to high ground. Pain Gaming, they've got to react to this. So far, the first 23 minutes, it's all been in Pain's hands. But Pain, they're losing a tier three in the middle lane. They're losing the racks as well. Pain, they've got to do something about this. They're trying to trade, but there's no way that they can trade as fast as a Drow lineup. As Liquid, 10k behind the entirety of this game, just walk up and take the what? melee racks. Anti-Mage wants to take that, but you don't win that against a Drow Ranger. You know? 
What a conversion on the Scotty timing. I mean, obviously, Liquid, we're not expected to get this much, and the Illusions finish off the Range Drax as well. Templar Assassin not able to clear that out in time, and now, Xanti Mage, that's no longer your jungle. You may have owned that for the first 15 minutes of the game, but... Mm. See if they can get someone here with the Burrow Strike lead in. They've got the control, and he's dead! They've killed off Leo! 4-4-4, four, four, four. he's surrounded, he has got the Burrow time, but there is no amount of time that he can borrow to keep himself alive here as Liquid kill him off as well. And I think pretty much from that Scardi pick up to the racks taken, this is the sort of slip up that you were worried that you could see from Pain. And it was unforced also. Like, I, Doom had a t TP scroll, anti mage had a TP scroll. It was wildly unnecessary to go for that trade. I mean, on the, at the minimum, at least they did take a tier three down bot, so shrines are available, but... Liquid are going to be more than willing to start challenging Roches. Their whole team is equipped to fight at this stage. And now Pain Gaming have to worry about a mid-rex constantly pushing in. Your anti-mage is dead for another 20 seconds. He's going to start slowing down. You already see him slip underneath the Medusa in terms of top net worth. It's only a matter of time before Drow Ranger takes her rightful place right below the Medusa. It really does just show you know, Pain Gaming, they have to somehow keep this lead. They cannot afford to slip up once more because if they have a 10k advantage and they lose a set of racks, they don't want to find out what happens when the game's in a more even state in terms of farm. Yeah, and Liquid are going to inch their way. I mean, it's only 25 minutes, but so much has happened on the map that it feels like it's gone much later, but it is not. Drow and Medusa are just getting started. And now Pain are going to smoke up. Roche is available, and ideally they want to find a pick and then immediately grab that in the cheese. It's going to be hard to, to sort of get to the back lines of, of Liquid, get to, to on top of that, that Miracle Medusa, though. Yeah, they don't even know where the back lines end. They have no vision. I did, they're just going to walk forward with the AM. Static Storm's down. Leo's in trouble. He's got the Manza style. He's also got that E-Blade that he's picked up. So he will be able to get out of there, stopping them from being able to hit him with the right clicks. A bit of a different build from the Anti-Mage, but it does save him. It does, and this is something that the panel had also mentioned earlier about good ways to deal with the Drow Medusa. They proposed, uh, Kyle was like, I, I think uh, Halberd Armlet carries are underrated, and being able to stop someone from right-clicking you with an E-Blade, it's not quite as effective, but it still kind of gets the job done. But are you going to be able to get the job done by challenging this Roche? Well, now, Adriano, he's into the pit. The BKB's popped. They'll look for Matumba. Matumba will be able to push back the anti-mage with the silence. There's the E-Blade on himself again, making sure that Matu can't hit him. Matu's dead. They'll try for more. Theolico jumps in, attempting with the Echo, but the Epicenter's already out. They're melting on Pain Gaming. They've lost the Theolico. They've lost Adriano. They've lost 4 4 4 There'll be a buyback with the Theolico, but Leo's in trouble. He cannot TP out. The damage is too much. Pain Gaming, they've lost four. And triple deny. kill for Miracle. It's now down to only a 4K lead, but Liquid's starting to show that the Pain Gaming Show may be over. Th As this game now... You're telling me it got canceled in season one? Just when the show was getting good? Liquid uh, turning it around so dramatically that I thought that Echo Slim would have been so much more effective and Rubik being able to steal the Doom as well. <sighs> Liquid, I mean, this is why they're a world-class team. So that's like, like what, 3,000 levels? I think that's <laughs> a lot of money my control spent. <laughs> uh, hey, it's working at the moment. Liquid now pretty much level in this game. And if anything, well, you've got to feel that they're ahead. If they've been able to swing around a game that was drifting them away from them as such, the other core. We'll get the fish you set up onto the two of them. Jump forward as well with Adriano. Kuro will be left behind. We'll get the kill on Kuro. The rest of Liquid will manage to get out of there for now. How long can you chase? Your tier fours are getting pushed in by creeps, though. This perpetual pressure is going to be so difficult because now Liquid, I mean, they're not under any pressure at this stage. They can take as much time as they needed, which they could have earlier on, but Pain were forcing the pressure. They were constantly invading the jungle, constantly clearing out all the vision, and we see in this replay. Yeah, Miracle just being able to instantly pop the Stone Gaze, move into a position after sort of two members of Pain Gaming had committed, he could easily get in between the team. So Pain couldn't really get together as much as they'd hoped to for that attempt on the fight. And sure, they do get the kill on the Deucer, but they lose so much for it, Pain. I mean, even then, given a deny, you're not thrilled about that no matter how it turns out. No bot lane, though, Leo. Yeah, this is not the anti-mage that we saw in the first 10 minutes. This is an anti-mage who has to play scared now. And definitely a game where it's, it's felt like so far for Liquid. And Miracle, he's just sort of told the rest of the team, you do whatever you want in the laning stage, I will be able to carry you. 
And so far, 20 minutes, it is looking like that. This Medusa, a huge issue for Pain Gaming. If they make any sort of misstep in the team fights, Mir Miracle's gonna kill them all. Problem is, the missteps have already been done. Now, Pain Gaming have to do extra credit. They need to somehow find the back lines, like you said. They need to find out where this disruptor is to make sure that this anti-mage doesn't get static stormed and doesn't have to use his E-Blade defensively. He just has to play so delicately now. They do try for a bit of a poke at the high ground themselves. Liquid will bring three of them back to defend. Matuma Man GH and Mind Control are there. Pain still in the jungle. Actually blinking down into the mid lane. Leo does blink in aggressively to try and find some farm. But the Poro Strike's there, he's dead. We well, believe that the Stolen Doom as well from GH at 444. He can't TP out in front of this. They're gonna lose another hit, Pain as 444 will fall. As again, more mistakes. Pain Gaming, Leo getting greedy, just blinking in like that into the mid lane to just hit the creeps, tank the wave. Liquid more than ready for that sort of play. Zedriano and Theolicor will still try and push on on this top. Despite being the only two up here on pain, Liquid for the, for the time being, they're ignoring them. They're in with the five man. They're just pushing into the base again. They do get the kill onto Kuro with the BKB usage, but they've got to look down bottom as Liquid, they're inside the base. Pain, can they really trade this? Adriano realizes he can't. He's already TPing out of there. There'll be a buyback from Leo because they're losing another tier three down on this bottom lane. Liquid nearly killing it off. They will now be forced back. Kuro continuing to play around with Leo Liquid up top. We'll be able to get up with the Shadow Amulet and Blink. Out of that sentry range, so he will survive. But the heat really is turning up for, for, P, for Pain Gaming. So now with a Templar Assassin, I'm more okay with them going for that trade. She has a Desolator. She is able to take objectives fairly quickly. And so Liquid, again, did a fair amount of damage to the Tier 3 tower down bot. But Pain Gaming come out slightly ahead as being able to successfully take down that Tier 3 up top. It's just that... These hit and run tactics will only take you so far. You have to burn a BKB charge just to kill the Kuroki Disruptor. He bought back, but your anti mage also bought back. And then an anti mage buyback is not, like, there's no situation in which you want to have to do that and then get no kills in a preceding team fight. I think there's a lot of pressure on Theo Lecour Shaker to, to just start bringing out those plays of a caliber that he was in the lane stage. He has got the Shadow Blade. He needs to somehow make sure that mind control. And Kuro aren't able to get these big team fight controlling ultimates off. Because every single time, if Leo links in aggressively, there's a static storm, a burrow strike on top of him. The early has got to make sure that doesn't happen. There's up top, they do find Matumba separated from the team. The Drought in trouble, they'll kill him off the ones. He has the Aegis, we'll see Liquid come in to try and protect him a second time, but there's the quick play for Leo. Jumps in onto Kuro, but Kuro, instant static storm. The lift oh, into the stone no. gaze. Leo's just dead and gone for 100 seconds. 4-4-4 four, four, four will also surely fall. The Olacor just having to hide in the trees. He cannot rectify this fight. Lelis is surrounded. This should be a third dying. He has got that crimson. He's incredibly tanky, but Liquid, they look for the control, trying to drag it back. He does have the BKB. So in fact, with the BKB popped and the Scorched Earth, he should have a good shot of getting away. GH is going to continue to try and chase him. And he will get doomed up for that, for that attempt. So GH will now tag, tag himself out of this. Matu and Mind Control continue to play around. It will take them a, a fair bit of time to kill him. But with that ult, those piercing arrows, Matu will still be able to shoot down the Doom. Three dead and now Liquid in control fully of the game. The net worth back on their half of the map. We saw the struggles that Pain Gaming, when they had such an advantage in the gold. 10,000 lead, it didn't matter. Liquid, they're straight down the middle lane. Miracle's onto the tier fours. He's done with this one. He's ready to try and move it on to game two. They've had their fun. As Pain, with two heroes dead, no buybacks, very limited on what they can do to try and hold this Dio. He is setting up, they will jump immediately with a BKB pop. They're looking to try and kill off Matuma Man, but they cannot. Dio Lacour will fall, only the two of them left. The physical damage is too much for the drought. GG is called, and Liquid will take this game one. A game one that the hope was high for Pain at the start. But as you mentioned early on, one mistake, and it was a pretty colossal one. This